Thank you very much. Almost everybody knows that HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. The trouble is that uh, that's not the case. The results of HIV tests, by HIV I mean whatever it is that HIV tests detect. The results of those tests show that HIV varies with age, sex, race, and geography in a completely regular way, and no infectious disease does that. Moreover, the numbers for, from HIV tests and the numbers of AIDS cases do not correlate geographically, chronologically, or in how they impact men and women, or how they impact members of different races. That's set out in this book, which was published last year. Details of the book are at this website, and additional commentary is on this blog. I doubt that anyone can be convinced about what I've just said without going through all those data. And this is a very time-consuming business. When I was gathering the data, for months, I could not believe what I was seeing, and I couldn't disbelieve it. And I simply doubt that anyone can take my word for it just because I say it so. A few months ago, I realized that data on deaths from HIV disease, which is the new name for AIDS, offer simple and conclusive proof that HIV is not the cause of AIDS. Here's the official HIV AIDS history. AIDS was first recognized or defined in the early 1980s. In 1984, HIV, the human immune deficiency virus, was pronounced the probable cause of AIDS. Infection with HIV is supposed to lead to illness after a latent period of about 10 years, and after AIDS has set in, death followed within a couple of years. In 1987, the first drug to treat AIDS was introduced, AZT. That was supposed to perhaps double the lifespan after AIDS set in. In 1990, AZT started to be used to treat people who were not yet ill, but who had tested positive for HIV. And in the mid-1990s, the now famous cocktail treatment of several drugs in combination were introduced. It's usually called just HEART for highly active antiretroviral treatment. And it is said to extend the latent period before AIDS set in considerably. And it's often spoken of now as extending the latent period so much that HIV AIDS is now not a fatal, incurable illness, but chronic, but manageable. In other words, the time from infection to death has gone from maybe a dozen years in up to 1987 to 25 years or more nowadays. So, the ages at which people die from AIDS should have shifted to progressively later ages. They haven't. Here's the age distribution of deaths from HIV disease, 1987, 1990, 1995, 2000, 2004, the age at which most people who die from HIV disease die is around 40 years of age. 
when you normalize these curves so that uh, the peak is the same in all of them, you can see even more clearly that there is no major shift in this curve. It should have shifted by 10, 15, or 20 years since 1987. It hasn't. What has happened is there's been a change in skewness of the curve. The explanation for that is neither simple nor obvious, and I'll, um, I'll talk about it uh, if I have time uh, at the end. Interpretation. If the ages at which people die has not changed, then you might say, well, people were getting infected at younger and younger ages to exactly counterbalance the benefit from the drugs, which is implausible in itself. But beyond that, when you look at the data just for HIV infections, the peak age for testing HIV positive has been constant, again with a maximum in the 30s or 40s from 1985 to date. And the, the data for that is in my book. So, the most direct way of looking to see whether there's a latent period between HIV infection and AIDS and death is to compare the ages at which people get infected and the ages at which they die. There is a very nice large data set for HIV infections. Centers for Disease Control published for 1995 to 1998 results of testing in prisons, hospitals, TB clinics, sexually disease clinics, family planning, prenatal clinics, gay men, drug abusers, a total of about 10 million tests. So this was a pretty good cross-sectional sample of the population. The dark curve here shows the ages at which people tested HIV positive in those, uh, in that ac accumulated data set. And this lighter one is the 2004 distribution of deaths from HIV disease. And you can see that they just about superpose. Uh, the data for those two things are given in 10-year intervals and they're not overlapping. They're not identical 10-year um, intervals. So that uh, puts a little bit of uncertainty into how exactly those compare. But beyond that, not only should these two curves be shifted by 10 years or more, the infections were measured in 1995 to 1998 at a time when these cocktail, life-saving cocktails had already been introduced. So the people who tested positive in 1995 to 1998 should not have been dying until 25, 2010, 2015 or so, not at the same ages as where they were infected. So here are the hard questions for the mainstream point of view. Where is the latent period? Test any group for HIV and you find that they test positive most frequently in the late 30s and early 40s look at the National Center for Vital Statistics data on deaths from HIV disease, and year after year, the ages at which people die most frequently from that are again in the late 30s and early 40s. There is no latent period.